Hi there and welcome to this video. This week I thought I'd focus in on the release this week of Nikon's new firmware for their Z6 and Z7 which is a, an update of the C firmware for the cameras to version 2.20. It obviously comes hot on the heels of version 2.10, which gave some improvements to eye autofocus, gave some additional functionality to the control ring, so allowing you to assign ISO control to the, the lens control ring, and a few other minor fixes. Version 2.20 is the much anticipated firmware release that allows the camera to accept CF Express cards, and also output in ProRes RAW video. It was much anticipated because both of those functionalities have been sold pretty much from day one of the camera as being differentiators. If we start with the CF Express cards, obviously Nikon is um, reliant on the manufacturers of those cards to come to a stable position with regards to the the cards and how they work um, before Nikon can test them and then make sure their firmware is upgraded um, to um, be adapted to work with them. CF Express cards are a step forward in technology from the XQD cards and allow data transfer rates of almost four times that that you get with an XQD card of about 1700 megabits per second. Um, they do come at a price premium. So here in the UK, they are almost twice the price of XQD cards. So you've got to know you need that data transfer um, rate to be able to invest in them. They're not just a like-for-like -like replacement. With version 2.20 of the firmware, it states that they, the firmware update is compatible with Sony Type B CF Express cards. Um, however, I am seeing some rumors that some people have tested the SanDisk equivalent and found they work. However, there is always a risk if you use a um, non-tested card in the camera that at some point there it may be corrupted and you'll lose some images. So it'll be interesting to see how Nikon goes forward and adds to their recommended card list, whether the SanDisk will require a further firmware update or whether it will just work um, with the current version 2.20. The second piece of functionality that's been rolled out with this firmware release is, as I say, the, the ability to export ProRes RAW video. This is the equivalent of being able to capture RAW photographs, but for video. And ProRes RAW is an Apple proprietary codec. Um, and since the release of the camera, Nikon have always said that this piece of functionality would be available with the Z6 and Z7 when you married it up with an Atomos Ninja 5 um, recorder. However, what we've learned with the firmware update is that after updating the firmware, you also need to return your camera to a Nikon service center to have the um, functionality activated. And there is a fee for this. Um, here in the UK, it will be £179 plus shipping. If you're in the US, it's $199 plus shipping. Now, up until the release today, it had been intimated that this was functionality that would just be made available in the cameras. So it's probably worth thinking about what might have changed this. The firmware has been delayed, and this would imply that not all has gone smoothly. You know, we're talking about two pieces of functionality which require interfaces with third parties, the CF Express cards and the Atomos Ninja 5 um, recorder, and also, of course, the ProRes codec. And this could have you know, caused a number of challenges. We're trying to get a complex system to be working at the edge of the performance envelope in both cases. This isn't a simple task, but why does the camera have to be sent back to a Nikon service center? Well, it could be for any number of reasons. It could be that the firmware is either too large or too complex to be able to be um, up, upgraded from an XQD card. It may require some kind of interfacing that can only be done in the service center. It could be that 
Because the camera has multiple different elements to the firmware, it's not possible to flush through the camera's firmware without a high risk of it bricking. Um, and therefore the decision was made that actually it should only be done by trained technicians in a Nikon service center. It's possible that as it's using a third party codec that actually you need to be able to take it back to a service center to authorize that codec or some element of the functionality. Another reason could be that actually there needs to be some hardware tweak made or change to it around the HDMI which perhaps hasn't been performing in the same way as predicted. So there are multiple reasons why the need for um, the service center to perform this authorization rather than it being done remotely. Nikon are pushing the boundaries here with this piece of functionality. It's a fairly major update to the firmware and therefore it could be that they don't have the capability built into the camera yet to be able to remotely authorize um, the licensing of a piece of the software. So there are many different reasons why it could require to go back to a service center. The question of why there is such a high price that's required, you know, £179 indicates that there's probably two to three hours of work required to do this authorization, or that perhaps an element of that is a payment to perhaps Apple for the use of the codec, or some other reason that's bundled into it. This said, the ProRes RAW export functionality is going to be of limited appeal to people. It does require the Atomos Ninja 5 recorder, which here in the UK is about £600. You also need an SSD to go in the back of that. And then when you add on the £180, £179 for the authorization of the in-camera functionality, you're probably talking not far short of a thousand pounds for the upgrade. If you marry this with the fact that you've got to have a perhaps a higher level of skills to be able to color grade your videos um, well in post-production, it really is going to be of limited appeal to justify that very high cost of upgrade. Especially as what I found is the quality of video output you get without having that ProRes RAW export is really high and therefore justifying such a high cost of upgrade is really going to be for a very limited segment of the market probably the professional videographers who are trying to bring together video captured in a Z series with that of a, a more expensive professional video camera. That said, it will be interesting to see how the market reacts to having to pay um, a relatively high upgrade cost um, over and above that which was perhaps anticipated. Equally, the cheeky part of me thinks, you know, is Nikon testing the concept of an app store? Um, for functionality. You know, with the, some of the Sony compact cameras, in the past we've seen that you buy the compact camera with the, the basic functionality, but if you wanted, say, time-lapse functionality, Sony would sell you that for an extra cost. That functionality isn't built into the Nikon Z series, so maybe Nikon is testing the market to find out if there is appetite to buy functionality in a bite-sized app-based way. It'd be interesting to see because this is one model that could well work in the future as the capabilities of cameras increase as they become more connected to the wider ecosystem. I think it's unlikely that that's the primary reason this is being done, but it could be interesting to see um, how the market reacts and whether that does open up you know, further opportunities for the likes of Nikon in the future. I've already updated my Z7 to version 2.20 of the firmware. It went very smoothly, no issues to date. However, for me, the firmware doesn't give me a great deal of functionality. I don't have any CF Express cards and I don't intend to upgrade my cameras um, to the ProRes RAW output. If I had been able to do that free of charge, I might have tested it to see whether it gave me any benefits but I know it's not going to give me benefits at the price point that it's been, in, been um, pitched at. So have you upgraded your Z series cameras to version 2.20 or are you still operating on version 2.10? 
Let us know in the comments below. Let us know what your thoughts are on the approach that Nikon's taken to the ProRes RAW um, export functionality. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, as always, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll get notified of future videos. And I look forward to seeing you on a future video.